Prime Minister Yin Lakshinawat has just reshuffled her cabinet, affecting all ministerial seats available at the Education Ministry. The changes have not just shaken up the political scene, but they have also highlighted the fact that her elder brother and ex-Prime Minister Thaksin has never seriously planned to develop the kind of good education that's essential to the future of the country. If Thaksin really cared about education, he would have been careful in his selection of who should serve as the education minister as well as the deputy education ministers. However, recent history shows that Thaksin has frequently changed his education ministers. The tenth under his watch is newly appointed Suchat Thada Thamrongwet. During the two Thaksin-late governments. The Education Ministry saw Katse Motana Chai, Taksin himself, Suwit Kunkiti, Bongpon Adirek San, Adisai Potaramik, and Chaturon Chai Sang at his helm. Such frequent changes raised questions as to whether the appointment of the Education Minister was more for political reasons than for the benefit of the country. And with Taksin controlling the government through Samak Sun Torawet, Som Chai Wong Sawat, and now Ying Lak. He has also apparently continued to allocate education portfolios for his political reasons. Water Wat U Apinyakun had served as the country's education minister for just five months before being removed yesterday from the post. Two of his deputies suffered the same fate. Taksin, now a fugitive, has wielded a great deal of power in shaping the country's educational policies over much of the past decade. However, Taksin has only focused on populist policies in relation to education. Thanks to the use of populism, Taksin remains one of the most popular politicians in Thailand to date. To woo votes, he introduced the One District One Scholarship Scheme, the Lab School Project, and a program to offer educational loans to all interested students, regardless of their family's financial status. In response to his initiative, the current administration is going ahead with a one-tablet PC per child scheme. Critics are cautioning about the lack of proper content for the tablet PCs. Yet the current government is paying no heed to the warning, vowing to implement the policy with the utmost speed. These populist policies have not touched the core of the country's education system. There is no need to rush their implementation. Taksin is doing so purely to further his own political goals. In the meantime, he has set no tangible education goals for the country to focus on and trying to achieve over the past decade. Had the five governments under his control focused not just on populist educational policies for the short-term political advantages, the country's education would have progressed much further. Julia Ratsang Patsa, The Nation Analysis for RCN TV.